For my latest mini election trip, I'm off to Mayfair in London to speak to columnist Tim Montgomery about his new project, The Good Right. He's one of the most influential conservative voices in Britain. So what is the background of his new project and what does he hope to achieve? Explain what you think is wrong with conservatism in Britain at the moment. Well, there's a lot that's right with it. Um, the good right that I'm sort of proposing at the moment isn't a ref revolution, it's what I call a reformation. I think it just conservatism in a few respects needs reforming. And if conservatives don't win a majority outright at the next general election, which I think all the polls suggest is do you agree true. With the, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think the Tories will struggle to win a majority. That means the last time the Tories won a majority was 1992. Charles and Diana were still happily married. Nobody had internet in their homes. Not a ball in the premiership had been kicked. That's a long time for a party that was probably the world's most successful political party in the 20th century. And it stopped winning elections. Something is wrong. So before we go on to what the good right is, th we have been here before with the Cameroon Modernisation Project, mm. which was very much focused on policy exchange in 2005 and that have ideas. Do you think Tory modernisation failed or did it even exist to begin with? Well, there were some strengths of what David Cameron did and I think the focus on the National Health Service, for example, was really important. People didn't believe the Conservatives could be trusted with the public services. But a lot of the other kind of modernisation that he pursued was almost like trying to reach Guardian readers. It was trying to reach liberal... HS2, uh, same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage, civil liberties... Um, climate, emphasis on climate change, it didn't address the fundamental Tory problem, which all of the opinion polling says is that we are Conservatives seen as the party of the, of the rich. As what's your elevator pitch of what the good right is? The good right is to actually remind Conservatives that actually Conservatism didn't begin in 1979. Although Margaret Thatcher was a brilliant Prime Minister, I used to, I don't know whether I should admit this, I had a poster of her on my wall when I was a student at uh, university in the late 80s. But there was a conservatism that existed before, like Harold Macmillan committed to house building, Winston Churchill for industrial um, reform, um, the factory conditions. Conservatives have been willing to use the power of the state for social good. And I think there's been a tendency within too many Conservatives to shy away from almost any new activity, new state programme, because it's almost got it into their head that they're against the state in all circumstances. That shouldn't be the case. If we were sitting here in 1981, wouldn't you have just been labelled a Tory wet? Well, I have been called a Tory wet. This by Giles week, Fraser. By on, on Newsnight, yeah. So, um, uh, and a Do you few think others as well. I think he is wrong, because a lot of what I propose in the good right, the left would support. So more council house building, for example, and um, more investment in infrastructure. But the only way that those things could be afforded is by changing the priorities of the state, cutting back, for example, on wasteful welfare spending, stopping the subsidy of low pay by employers. The left would just increase the power of the state to do all these new things, in addition to everything it's already doing. But one of the differences for the centre-right perspective, as well as linking it to all traditional conservative views on the family and Europe and so on, is that we believe that not um, that the state should be bigger overall, it should just be doing different things. But you're not looking at 2015 here, the election's just a few weeks away, well, months, weeks away now. You're looking further into the future, is this for targeted for a future conservative leadership or do you think David Cameron might come round on side? Well there's still the manifesto you know, to be published, I understand there's some big discussions going on behind the scenes about potentially some quite bold initiatives for Blue Collar Britain to be included in that manifesto. Um, I certainly still hopeful that the next Tory government, elected hopefully under David Cameron in May, will be able to advance a lot of this too. That's it for this mini, mini election trip in London. Join me again soon to find out more about how the general election is being fought in a different part of the country. Find out more at minielection.co.uk.